There are renewed calls tonight for more action to tackle gun violence. In a year when already more than 40 families have been broken apart by deadly bullets here in the city of Toronto alone. A private member's bill introduced by Liberal MPP Mitzi Hunter has now passed its first reading in the legislature. She wants a comprehensive public health approach to deal with what she says is a gun crisis in our communities. For more on this, we welcome to CP24 tonight, MVP for Scarborough Guildwood, Mitzi Hunter. Also, Dr. Najma Ahmed, founding co-chair of Canadian Doctors for Protection from Guns. And Evelyn Fox, a mom who lost her son to gun violence in 2016 and started a campaign called Communities for Zero Violence. Evelyn, uh, we have spoken to you in the past. Thank you so much for being here to talk once again about your son Kissinger, and we will get to your story in just a moment. Uh, so thank you for your time. I want to start with you, Mitzi, uh, because this is your bill. When I think about gun violence in this city and the impact, and, and sometimes we see these GoFundMe campaigns for families who are victims of gun violence, the first thing I think about uh, sometimes is the trauma that lasts years and years and how therapy costs you know, several hundred dollars, hundreds of dollars an hour sometimes. And, and how is this family going to be able to afford the support they need? Uh, so I wanted you to talk about the, the idea behind this bill and, and the cost uh, that these families have to deal with, aside from, from the trauma that they're dealing with every day. Well, thank you so much for you know convening this very important conversation. And, and I'm very happy Evelyn is here to, to share her, her powerful story. And it is just that reason why we need to respond with a comprehensive public health response. Uh, we're in the midst of a pandemic right now and we see the value of public health. And these communities that are affected by gun violence need just as much time and attention and resources paid to them so that the community can heal. Gun violence is a public health crisis right now. We've had 17 more homicides in Toronto than all of last year. And, you know, when we talk to young people and we talk to families, and I've been in my community where there's been eight shootings in the month of November alone, I see the fear. I see the hopelessness. And we have to, you know, make sure that there isn't intergenerational trauma that carries forward. And we need to break the cycle of violence in our communities. My private member's bill, Bill 60, will Will do that. It will make it a, a public health issue. Boards of public health will have comprehensive programs to deal with it, hospital-based interventions, community-based interventions, and importantly, for those who are, have experienced that type of trauma, they will get trauma-informed counseling covered by OHIP mm -hmm. so we can heal from this issue. And Mitzi, this is past first reading. Do you anticipate you will have support from the opposition, or for, I should say from the governing conservatives as well, so that obviously your goal is this bill becomes law. Yes, that is the goal. Um, today, I asked a, a question of, of the government uh, to support this bill. I believe it is it is a, a nonpartisan issue. We can all agree that community safety is something that we want in all communities in Ontario. And I was encouraged by the government house leader who said that he would review the contents of the bill and should he find that it has merit, um, that they would consider passing it. So I'm encouraged by that. I know that the NDP uh, is also supportive of, uh, of issues when it comes to gun violence in our community. So it should be a nonpartisan issue. This should be all about community, putting community, and more importantly, our young people and their futures at the center of this decision. Mm -hmm. Evelyn, let's eliminate the politics out of this completely. You have bravely stood before cameras and microphones for the last five years talking about your son, Kissinger, uh, 26 years old, father of four, lost his life in September 2016. How would a bill like this help families like yours in this terrible aftermath and the years of terrible aftermath that follow? Well, this is actually something I did a deputation on with the Toronto Board of Health, and that was actually my request, was to have um, OHIP covered services for um, families after, because trying to find myself and my family services um, after victim services, their funding ran out. It was <laughs> extremely difficult. Everything, anything that you you require by psychotherapist is not covered under OHIP. Um, so, and then with the kids as well, they're, the stuff 
to get a specialized counselor that is geared specifically for children and dealing with the, this type of trauma, there isn't anything that's free either. Mm -hmm. So, and if there is something that's free, the waiting list is extremely long. So I'm, I am so happy that this is being brought forward and I'm happy that it's past the first reading. Um, this is such a, it's such a big but small step forward at the same time um, because the supports are necessary to um, not only deal with the potential for suicides, but also the potential for retaliation. So it, uh, it makes me really happy to see that you know, somebody's listening. How much of a factor does that re-traumatization uh, play here once you've lost someone who's so dear to you, now you've got to pay out of pocket hundreds or thousands of dollars to get support? What would it have meant for your family, for example, to have this kind of protocol in place, these supports in place when you lost Kissinger back in 2016? And not only families, but communities as well. I'm thinking of the playground shooting a few years ago, the shooting at a Tandridge birthday party, a child's birthday party earlier this summer. What do these supports mean, Evelyn? They are, are very significant. Yeah, like the, you, first of all, you have a funeral that you don't anticipate paying for, which I didn't even realize how much a funeral costs until my son was killed. And then having to try and navigate the, the different avenues in services, it's, it, it's very overwhelming. So it, it, this is just, it's such a big step. Like I said, it's, it's, I'm, I'm really happy. I am really happy that it's coming forward. I really am because it's so needed. It really is so needed. And Dr. Ahmed, Evelyn raises so many great points. Uh, her son Kissinger, not only a son, he had a fiance, four children. Uh, the, the impact of the loss of life extends to so many people. And it's a, the impact lasts a lifetime. As Evelyn points out, victim services, uh, uh, an extension of the Toronto Police is there to provide support. Uh, as far as I'm, I'm aware, it's not exactly a lifetime of support, as Evelyn has noted. Uh, so let's talk about, I mean, how many people do you think this could help here in our province when you think about the loss of one life impacts so many people? Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me, and it's wonderful to be here. Um, uh, on behalf of Canadian Doctors of Protection from Guns, we are delighted to support this private member's bill. We think it's incredibly important because I can tell you that as a trauma surgeon, you know, the wounds do not heal after we finish our surgery and our hospitalization. Often these patients are in the hospital for weeks uh, and if not months attached to life support on having uh, many, many reoperations just to, to, to heal the physical wounds. Uh, and then there's the emotional scarring and the traumatization uh, for themselves, the emotional scars, and for their families and for their communities. And there is insufficient um, support in the community, to, the community to help these uh, communities put their lives back together. You know, the bullets from these guns reverberate for generations. Someone said that we have to be careful to avoid intergenerational trauma, but it's very, very true. These are young people who are in, you know, at the, at the, the, in, the, in, the, in the midst of building their lives and all of a sudden all of that is taken away and people who are left never imagined that they would be grieving such a young person. So I think that these supports uh, that Mitzi has put forward and I'm pleased to hear that the government uh, uh, considers many of these uh, points as meritorious because we also consider that this bill has a lot of merit and will do a lot of good in communities. People have to understand, just like any other illness, uh, it, it doesn't end when the patient leaves the hospital. Mm -hmm. They have to put their lives back together. There's a lot of emotional, um, physical, uh, economic hardship that happens. People have to retrain in different careers if they survive these injuries. There's a lot of questions, often criminal and police investigations uh, take many years to resolve. And uh, I think it's been demonstrated that a public health approach uh, is the best approach for these kinds of diseases and gun violence is a disease uh, and that you know uh, addressing the social determinants of health is a key aspect to prevention as well as treatment mm -hmm. so we are delighted to have this conversation with all parties and to, to urge the government 
to um, see us with passage of this bill. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. We want to, uh, Beatrice, I believe, to share this image here. Yeah, we're up against the clock, but if we can end off this segment, Evelyn, showing this police sketch of the suspect still at large who police believe is responsible for your son's death. In just a few seconds, what do you say to anyone out there who might have information about him? I'm just begging to please do what's right, to, to you know, come forward and I know it's difficult but to come forward and give our family some sense of justice and closure um, and take this murderer off the streets <clears throat> hold him accountable for his crime MPP Mitzi Hunter Dr. Najma Ahmed Evelyn Fox thanks to all